Hey, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Pure Accelerate 2021. I'm Lisa Martin. Pleased to be welcoming back one of our alumni, Merli Tirumala is here, the VP and GM of the Cloud Native Business Unit at Pure Storage. Merli, welcome back. Lisa, it's great to be back at theCUBE. Uh, looking forward to the discussion. Likewise. So it's been about six months or so since the Portworx acquisition by Pure Storage. Give us a lay of the land, what's been going on? What are some of the successes, early wins and some of the lessons that you've learned? Yeah, you know, it, it, this is my third time being acquired, being a serial entrepreneur. So, uh, so I've seen this movie before and I have to say that, you know, this is really a, a, a lot of good anticipation followed by actually a lot of good stuff that has happened since. So it's, 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 it's been a, it's been really a, a great ride so far. And uh, when, you know, let me kind of start with sort of the beginning, sort of what, what the, what the fundamental kind of goal of the, of the acquisition were, right? There were a couple of kind of major goals and then, kind of, I can talk about how that integration is going. Um, really, I think from, from our viewpoint, uh, from the Portworx viewpoint, the goal of the acquisition from our, our view was really to help kind of turbocharge and kind of our, our growth. We, we had really a, a very, very good product that was well accepted and established at customers, you know, uh, doing well uh, as far as kind of industry uh, acceptance was concerned. And, and uh, you know, frankly, we had some great reference customers and some, some great installs expanding pretty well. Our issue was really how fast can we, uh, can we turbocharge that growth? Because as everybody knows for a startup, the expensive part of an expansion is really on the go-to-market and sales side. And frankly, the timing for this was critical for us because the market had moved from the Kubernetes market has moved from sort of the innovator stage to the early um, majority stage. So from the pure side, I think it, this made a lot of sense for them because they have been looking for how they can expand their kind of subscription models, how they can move uh, to add more value from sort of the array based business that they really have been a wonderful disruptor in and to kind of add more value up the stack. And and you know that was sort of the premise of the of the uh, of the acquisition. One of the things that I paid a lot of attention to, as as anybody does in acquisitions, is not just the strategy, but really to understand if there was a culture fit between the teams. Because you know a lot of the times uh, acquisitions don't work because of the poor culture fit. And and so now let me kind of fast forward a little bit and say, hey, what you know, looking back in about six eight months into it. How is it turning out so far? And um, you know, things have been just absolutely wonderful. Let me actually start with the culture fit because that often is ignored and is one of the most important parts, uh, right? Um, the the resonance in the culture between the two companies is just 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 off the charts, right? It actually starts with what I would call a dramatic kind of customer first sort of orientation. It's something we always had. At Portworks, uh, I always, uh, you know, used to tell our customers with a startup, you 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 end up kind of, you know, you buy the product, but you get the team, right? You, you, that's what happens with with early stage startups. But Pure is sort of the same way. They are very focused on customers, so the customer focus is a very very uh, useful thing that pulls us together. The second thing it's been really heartwarming to see has been really the focus on. Uh, Product excellence. You know, Pure made its its uh, you know uh, dramatic entry into the market using Flash and being sort of the best Flash-based solution. And now they've expanded into many many different areas. And Portworks also had a focus on product excellence, and so that has kind of moved the needle uh, uh, forward for both of us. And then I think the third thing is really a focus on the team winning uh, and not just sort of an individual, right? And look, in these COVID times, this has been a tough year for everybody. I think, uh, you know, uh, it's it's to some extent, even as we onboard new people, it's the culture of the team, the ability to bring new people on board, imbibe the culture and make progress. All of that is really a function of how well uh, uh, the team kind of is a, you know, uh, you know, we is greater than me type of a model. And I think that the, both these, these three values of, of uh, you know, customer first, 
high focus on product excellence and the valuing the team, uh, uh, including the, uh, the resellers and the customers as part of the team has really kind of, you know, been the cornerstone, I think, of our success in the integration. Um, That's outstanding because, you know, you like you said, this is not your first rodeo um, launching, coming out of uh, stealth and launching and getting acquired, but doing so during one of the most challenging times in the last hundred years in our history while aligning cultures. I think that says a lot about the leadership on the Portwork side and the Pure side. You know, I have to say, right, this is one of those amazing things. I mean, and many people now have been, having been acquired can say this. Really, most of the diligence, the transactions, all of that were done over Zoom, right? So, and and then, of course, everything since then is 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 we're still in uh, in Zoom paradise. Uh, and so, I think uh, it it really is a testament to sort of the modern tools and stuff that we have, you know, that enable that. Now, let me talk a little bit about the content of sort of what has happened, right? So, strategically. Uh, I think uh, the three areas that I think we've had huge, uh, huge uh, kind of synergy and, and seeing the benefits are first and foremost on the product side. A little later, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about some of the announcements we're making, but essentially, you know, Pure had this outstanding kind of core storage infrastructure product, well-known uh, in the industry, you know, very much flash oriented part of the whole kind of all flash kind of era now. Um, and Portworx really came in with the idea of, of driving Kubernetes and cloud native workloads, which are really the majority of modern workloads. And what we found since then is that the integration of having really a more complete stack, which is really centered around what used to be an IT infrastructure purchase, and what is in fact for Kubernetes, a more DevOps oriented purchase. And, and that kind of a combination of being able to kind of provide that combo in, in one uh, package uh, is something that uh, we've been working very hard on in the last uh, six months. And you know, uh, I'll, I'll mention some of the announcements, but we have a number of integrations with Flash Array and Flash Blade and uh, other pure products that, that we're able to highlight. Uh, so, so product integration for sure has been an area of some focus, but again, a, a lot of progress. The second one is really customer synergy. You know, uh, uh, I kind of described to our team when we got acquired, I said, it's, it's for us, it's, uh, you know, being acquired by Pure is like strapping a rocket ship, you know, to ourselves as a small company, because we now have access to a huge customer footprint. Pure has over 8,000 customers, hugely, amazingly high, kind of almost, uh, um, you know, unbelievable NPS score uh, with customers, uh, uh, one of the best in the IT industry. And I think, you know, we are finding that with the deployment of containers be becoming more ubiquitous, right? 80, 90% of customers in the enterprise are adopting Kubernetes and, and containers. And therefore, these 8,000 customers are a, you know, big, huge target. They've got a big target sign for uh, for both of us to be able to kind of leverage. And so we've kind of had a number of things that we're doing to kind of address and use the pure sales team to get access to them. The pure channel, of course, is also part of that. Pure is a 100% channel organization, which is great. So I, I think the synergy on the customer side with, with uh, being able to kind of have a solution that works for infrastructure and for DevOps has been a big area. You know, in this day and age, Kubernetes is an area for many of your listeners who are very, very familiar with, with Kubernetes. Customers struggle not just with day zero, but day one, day two, day three, right? It's how do you put it in production and support and integrating and, and the use of Kubernetes and containers putting that stack together is a big area. So support is a big area of pain for customers. And it's an area that, again, for a Portworks viewpoint now, we've expanded our footprint with a great support organization that we can bring to bear, you know, 24 by seven around the globe. Uh, Portworks is running on a lot of mission critical applications in big industries like, you know, finance and retail and, and, and you know, these types of things really, support is a big, big uh, area. And then last thing I will, I will just say is, 
the the use cases are uh, hugely synergistic, right? And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about use cases as we go along here, but really, there's legacy apps, right? You know, in in a, in, a, in an interesting way, there's eighty percent of IT spending is still on legacy apps, if you will, in that stack. However, uh, eighty percent of all the new applications are being deployed on this kind of modern app stack, right? With right. with um, all these open source type of products uh, and, and, and technologies. And most of that stack, the most of the modern app stack is containerized. You know, the 80, 85% of those applications really are uh, where customers have chosen containers and Kubernetes as the, as the mechanism to deliver those apps. And therefore, uh, you know, pure products like FlashBlade were very, very focused with fast recovery for these kind of modern apps, which are, you know, the stack of AI and personalization and uh, uh, all the modern digital apps. And I think uh, those things kind of align well with the, with the Portworx offering. So uh, really around the areas of culture, um, you know, uh, uh, customers, product synergy, support, and finally use cases are all kind of been areas of huge progress for us. It also seems to me that the Portworx acquisition gives Pure a foray, a new buying center with respect to DevOps. Talk to me a little bit about that as an opportunity for Pure. Yeah, um, the you know the, the 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 modern world is one where the enterprise itself has segmented into a whole lot of new uh, areas of spending and and infrastructure ownership, right and. You know, in the old days, it used to be sort of the uh, network storage compute and apps, <laughs> sort of the, the, the old kind of model of the world. And of course, the app model has moved on. And then, you know, uh, certainly there's a lot of uh, different ways, web apps, you know, the three-tier apps and the web apps and so on. But the infrastructure world has morphed really into a, a bunch of other sub-segments. And some of it is still traditional hardware but then even that has been is being cloudified, right? Because a lot of companies like Pure have taken their hardware array offerings and are offering that as a as a cloud-like offering where you can purchase it, you know, as a service. And and in fact, Pure is kind of offering a set of solutions called Evergreen that allow you to not even, you know, you just kind of under a subscription, you get your hardware refreshes bundled in. Very very innovative. So. You have now new buying centers coming in. In addition to the old traditional IT, there is sort of this whole, what used to be in the old ways called middleware now has kind of morphed into this DevSecOps kind of set of folks, right? Which is DevOps, it's, it's IT ops, and even security is a big part of that. The CISO organization has that kind of segment. And so these buying centers often have new budgets, right? It turns out that, for example, to contrast, you know, these, the Portworx budget really comes from an entirely different budget, right? Our top two budget sources are usually CIO initiatives. They're not from the traditional storage budget. It comes from things like move to cloud or business transformation. And, and you know, those set of folks, that set of customers is really um, born in a different era, so to speak. You know, Lisa, they come, and I come from the old world. So I would say that, you know, I'm kind of more of a, uh, an oldie, hopefully a goldie, but, but an oldie. These folks have born in the post DevOps, post cloud, post open source world, right? They are uh, used to brand new tools, new GitOps, the way to, way to, you know, everything's run on the cloud, it's on demand. So uh, what we bring to Pure is really the ability to take their, uh, initiatives which were around infrastructure and cloudifying infrastructure to now adding two layers on top of that, right? So what Portworx adds to Pure is the uh, access to the new automation layer of middleware. Kubernetes is nothing but really an automation of, of uh, model for, for containers and for infrastructure now. And then the third layer is on top of this is what I would call SAS, the SASified layer and as a service layer. And so, uh, you know, we, we bring the opportunity to get into those SAS-like budgets, the DevOps budgets and the DevOps and the SAS kind of 
buyers. And together, uh, the business has sort of very different uh, models to it. You know, in addition to not just a different uh, technologies, the buying behavior is different. It's based on a consumption model. You know, it's a subscription business. So it really is a change for new budgets, new buyers, and new financial models, which is a subscription model, which, as you know, is valued much more highly by Wall Street nowadays compared to, say, some of the older hardware models. Well, when, you know, when we talk about storage, or when we talk about data or the modern data experience, the more and more data that's being produced, the more value potentially there is for organizations. I think we saw, we learned uh, several lessons in the last year. And one of them is that, you know, being able to glean insights from data in real time or near real time is for many businesses, no longer a nice to have, it's really table stakes. It was for survival of getting through COVID. It is now in terms of identification of new business models, but it elevates the data conversation up to the C-suite, the board going, Do we, is our data protected? Is it secure? Can we access it? And how do we deliver a modern data experience to our customers and to our internal employees? So with kind of that modern data experience and maybe the elevation of that conversation lens, talk to me about some of the things that you're announcing at Accelerate with respect to Portworks. Yeah, so there are uh, you know two sets of announcements. To be to be honest, actually, this is a pretty exciting time for us. We're in the KubeCon time and the Accelerate time, and so let me kind of you know draw a circle around sort of both those sets of announcements, if you will, right? So let's start perhaps with just uh, just the uh, sets of things that we are announcing at. Uh, uh, accelerate, right? This is kind of the first uh, uh, things that are coming up right now. And I'll tell you, there are some very, very exciting things that, that we're doing. So um, uh, the, the majority of the announcements is are centered around a, a release uh, that we have called 2.8. So Portworks is, you know, we've been, we've been in, the, in the market now for well over five years with the product that really has been you know, well deployed, very large global 2K enterprises. So the, 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 the three or four major announcements, one of them is what I was talking about earlier, the integration of uh, true Kubernetes applications running on pure storage. So uh, we have uh, a, a cloud native, a native implementation of Portworks running on Flash Array and Flash Blade where uh, essentially when users now provision a container volume through Portworks, the storage volumes are automatically created on Flash Array and Flash Blade, right? It's, it's the idea of without having to interface, so a DevOps engineer can deploy, uh, you know, storage as code by, by provisioning volumes using Kubernetes without having to go issue a trouble ticket or 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 a or a uh, service ticket for uh, for a pure array, and Portworks essentially uh, acts as sort of a layer between Kubernetes and the pure array, and we we allow configuration of volumes on the uh, storage volumes on the pure array directly. So essentially, now on Flash Array, uh, these volumes now receive the full suite of Portworks storage management features, including. Kubernetes DR, backup, security, auto scaling, and migration. So that is a, uh, a first kind of uh, version of sort of this integration, right? The second one, it's, 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 I is a personal favorite of mine. It's very, very exciting, right? When we came into Pure, we discovered that uh, Pure had this, uh, you know, software solution of, uh, uh, called Pure as a Service. It was uh, essentially a Pure One service that allowed for uh, uh, continuous call home and log and diagnostic information. Really an awesome window for customers to be able to kind of see what their array utilization is like, complete observability end to end on capacity, what's, what's coming up and allowed for proactive kind of, you know, addressing of outages or issues or uh, being able to kind of see it before it happened. The good news now is uh, Portworks is integrated with Pure One, and so uh, now customers have kind of a unified observability stack for their Kubernetes applications using Portworks and Flash Array and Flash Blade in the Pure One portal. So we are in the Pure One portal now, uh, really providing kind of 
end-to-end -end, uh, troubleshooting of issues and deployment. So very, very exciting. Uh, something that I think is a major step forward, right? Absolutely. Uh, well, that single pane of glass is critical for management. So many companies waste a lot of time and resources managing disparate disconnected systems. And again, the last year has taught us so many businesses, there wasn't time because there's going to be somebody right behind you that's going to be faster and more nimble and has that single pane of glass unified view to be able to make better decisions. Last question, really, before we wrap here, yep. I can hear your momentum. I can feel your momentum through Zoom here. Talk to me about what's next, because I know that when the acquisition happened about, we said six months or so ago, you said, this is a small step in the Portworx journey. So what's ahead? Um, Lisa, Great question. You know, I could say 10 things, but I'll let me kind of step up a little bit at the 10,000 foot level, right? In, in, in one sense, I think, you know, it's, it, no company gets to declare victory in this, in this ongoing battle and we're just getting started. But if I had to kind of say, you know, what are some of the, some of the major uh, uh, themes that, that we have been part of and have been able to, to kind of make happen, in addition to take advantage of. Pure obviously took advantage of the flash wave and the move to all flash. That's been kind of a major disruptor with Pura being the lead. For Portworks, it has been really the move to uh, containers and, and data management in an automated form, right? Kubernetes has become sort of not just a container orchestrator, uh, orchestrator looking north, but looking southbound is orchestrating infrastructure. We, have, we are in, in the throes of that uh, uh, revolution. But if you think about it, the other thing that's happening is all of this is in the service of, if you're a CIO, you're in the service of lines of businesses asking for uh, you know, a way to run their applications in a multi-cloud way, run their applications faster. And that is really the as a service revolution. And, it feels a little silly to almost talk about as a service in the in this late in the cloud era, but the reality is that's just beginning, right? The as a service revolution dramatically changed the IaaS business, the infrastructure business. But if you look at it, you know, data services as a uh, data as a service is something that is what our customers are doing. So our uh, customers are taking pure hardware pure uh, portwork software, and then they are building them into a platform as a service. Things like databases as a service. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing, you will see some announcements from us in the second half of this year, terribly exciting. I just you know can't wait for it, where we're going to be actually moving forward to allow our customers to more quickly get to data services uh, at the push of a button, so to speak, right? So Excellent. the idea of database as a service, uh, to offer messaging as a service, uh, search as a service, you know, uh, streaming as a service, and then finally some ML kind of AI as a service. These five categories of data services are what you should be expecting to see from uh, Portworx and Pure going forward um, from uh, in the next half. Big potential there to really kick the, the door wide open on the total adjustable market. Well, Merle, it's been great to have you on the program. I can't wait to have you on next because I know that there's so much more. Like I said, I can feel your momentum through our virtual experience here. Thank you so much for joining us, giving us the lay of the land of what's been happening with the Portworx acquisition and all of the momentum and excitement that is about to come. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Lisa. Here's to a uh, great, reduced COVID second half of the year. Oh, cheers to that. Yeah, cheers. All right. <laughs> For Murray, Murley Tiramale, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Pure Accelerate.